Welcome back to your DB2 tutorial series. A couple of videos ago, I discussed many-to-many -many relationships and how they need an intermediary table. The example I gave was users listing things they were interested in. So we had a table like this. And these are both foreign keys referencing another table. And you're probably wondering why I'm going all over this. Well, this is where you're going to run into second normal form problems. It's when you have something known as a composite primary key. Now, a composite primary key, the word composite is just a fancy word for humans to use, but the database doesn't actually use that word. So just know that when I say composite, that's not a keyword, okay? It's just, it's just a word to describe the type of primary key. And that type of primary key is the combination of multiple primary keys or just columns. So, for example, we can make the combination of these be the primary key. And the way that works is that the user ID, it can have repeating values all at once. Because you know primary keys you're not supposed to have repeating values, but this here is actually a foreign key. And foreign keys allow repeating values because you can have multiple references to the same primary key. And this down here is a foreign key as well. So we could have multiple interest ID in the table. The trick though is that you have to keep the combination of a user ID and the interest ID unique. So if we write out this data, we might have a one and a one, one, two, two, one, two, two, for example. So these both reference one entity, these both reference one entity, these both reference one entity, and these both reference one entity. So there's repeating data in both columns, but the thing is, the combination is never repeated. Once we have one one, you can't repeat that. Once you have one two, you can't repeat that. So that is how a composite primary key works. And when you define a composite primary key in DB2, you're going to put that at the bottom of your create table statement as if it was another column, but it's not. So it would look like this. This comma here is telling DB2 that we're going to have two columns in our primary key. This has to be done at the table level. So that means you're going to have your other columns up here. We haven't done a ton of SQL in these videos, but I did put a lot of examples on my website. So make sure you check that out. The link is going to be in the description and it'll update continually. So if you go there and you're finding not a ton of content, well, always check back regularly because I'm always updating it with new content. All right, I'm getting a little off topic though. We're talking about second normal form. <laughs> second normal form deals with something called partial dependencies. If you think back to the one-to-one -one relationships video and the other relationships videos, we talked about attributes depending on an entity. They describe an entity. Well, the same thing comes up here when we're talking about partial dependencies. We're talking about things describing the primary key, but only part of the primary key. So if that doesn't make any sense at all, that's okay. Essentially, imagine we have another column in here, but that column only really describes the interest section and not the user ID. It only describes part of that primary key. So let's say these interests have categories. We could say in here, interest category. And when we do this, we introduce a partial dependency in our database. Because if you think about this, the user really doesn't matter at all in the situation. Let's say we go in here and change the interest now from C++ programming to acrylic painting, for example. Well, the interest category might change from computer science to art. So there's definitely a dependency on this interest ID, but not the user ID. How do you fix this though? We've Recognize we have a partial dependency. The way we fix it is that we break off into another table. If we don't already have one, in this situation we probably do, and that's going to be the interest table. This category here needs to be moved into this table. And just get that out of the middle table. You don't, you don't need that here in the intermediary table. It doesn't belong. So we fixed our problem here. Now this interest is going to have a category which, you know, that could be referenced from another table, like a category table, if we really wanted. So what kind of columns can we put in this table legally? Only columns that depend on both of the primary key pieces. So for example, if you recorded when this association between a user and an interest was started. So for example, you join the website, two weeks later, 
you say, hey, I'm interested in computer science, well then it puts a timestamp saying, oh, this guy became interested in computer science at this time. Well, that's actually relevant to both the user and the interest because it's recording when a user became interested in something. So anytime you have something that relates to both of these and wouldn't really make sense in the user table and wouldn't really make sense in the interest table, you can put it in here as a column inside of the intermediary table between the many-to-many -many relationship. So I know this is kind of super complex. Second normal form is one of the hardest normal forms, especially because it really doesn't come up a whole lot, only when you have many-to-many -many relationships and you're dealing with storing things in the intermediary table. If you want to be on the safe side, just <laughs> try not to design your tables to where you have extra columns in an intermediary table. And there, you don't have a problem anymore. But then that means you can't store anything about this primary key. <laughs> So, you know, you got you to gotta balance. Once you figure it out, then you can go in here, put columns in here, and make sure that your data is structured correctly. So thanks, guys. If you have any questions, please leave a comment, and be sure to check out the description. I have uh, links for downloading DB2 and checking out my website. Uh, DB2 has been a good database to me, so I would encourage you to try it out and apply what I'm talking about here to your database in DB2. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.